Wall jumping is an unintended movement option that is endemic to older Mario games. Generally performed by clipping slightly into a wall at the point where two tiles meet, these tend to have pretty interesting consequences as far as speedruns go. In Donkey Kong 94, wall jumps have been used for years, often with varying degrees of success. As the all stages category becomes more optimized, more wall jumps have been added to the standard run as a bastion of time save. But unlike 7.5's icicle jump which is absolutely the most free 14 second time save ever, wall jumps have remained frustratingly obtuse. We have long theorized about how exactly they work, and how to make them more consistent. Recently I did some testing with current world record holder PTO1, aka Spence McNasty, aka ya boy, and we discovered some interesting frame data. The goal of this testing, and by extension this video, is to deliver our findings in an easily understandable way so that all runners can make well informed decisions about which wall jump strats to incorporate into their run. The Wall Hug Setup This method was discovered in February of 2019 by PTO1. Simply put Mario against the wall with no momentum, hold down right, start the handspring, hold right the whole time, and rejoice as your wall jump instantly becomes more consistent. This setup was groundbreaking as it provided a reliable, though slightly slower, method to setting up a successful wall jump when contrasted with the backflip wall jump, which we'll cover later in the video. However, I personally couldn't make this setup 100% consistent in my own runs. I was puzzled as to why I would only sometimes get the wall jump, so this is where my testing began. Using Gambat's frame advance, I began testing each frame after landing, trying to determine where the cutoff was. My findings are as follows. Only the first three landing frames, which I will call launch frames for the rest of the video, of the handspring jump will produce a wall jump opportunity. The wall jump opportunity is a seven frame window, regardless of which of the three launch frames you hit. Maximum height is consistent across all three launch frames as well. This is a good start. We now correctly understand how this setup can fail and can plan accordingly. For runners looking to practice this method, I would suggest learning to time the button press rather than mashing through it. I still mash the occasional wall jump, but the timing isn't too hard to get down and it'll save you some hand pain down the road. And your controller will thank you for not smashing it like you should be smashing that like button. Also, learning the precise timing will always be more consistent than mashing. Coincidentally, PTO had been showing me his backup wall jump strategy in 8.4 to counter bad RNG. But even with frame advance and first frame jumps on both frame windows, I found I couldn't reach the platform to hit the backup. Some form of lateral movement was necessary before the wall jump was inputted. Again, using frame advance, I was able to determine that there's a 10 frame window in the middle of Mario's launch jump that if a left input was pressed, I would still get a wall jump, but with significantly more lateral speed. Therefore, you have a three frame launch window, followed by a 10 frame window for left input, followed by a 7 frame wall jump opportunity. Whew. It's a lot of information to take in, but hopefully having these raw numbers will help you decide whether you want to incorporate any of these strategies into your run. After this find, we tested each of the wall jump strategies currently employed by Subtropicala runners. The idea was to, again to determine what, if any, special conditions needed to be met outside of the 10 and 7 frame windows. The following results are the blueprints for consistent wall hug setups. We found that any wall jumps that needed the left input weren't picky about which of the 10 frames you used, so as a result, if the left input is required, it will be denoted as hold left. In addition, any of these wall jump strategies will work with any of the three launch frames. For 1-4, holding left is optimal, and the first two frames of the 7 will clip you up onto the top platform. For this wall jump in 1-6, all frames from 1-7 to seven will work. For this consistent wall jump in 2-7, frames 1 to 7 will all work. For this wall jump in 3-7, frames 1 to 7 all work. For this wall jump in 4-7, you'll need to be holding left and it's a first frame trick only. For this jump in 5-3, frames 1 to 7 will all work. For this jump in 6-7, frames 1 to 7 will all work. For this 7-6 fast strat, Holding left is optimal, and only the first two frames of the 7 frame window will work. For this wall jump in 7-8, holding left is optimal, and frames 1-7 to seven all work. For the backup in 8-4 to counter bad RNG, holding left is necessary and frames 1-7 to seven will all work. Now, the astute among you will notice that I have not included 7-2 in this list, and that is because we do not have a wall hug set up for it. We theorize that this is because of the ice's friction difference, and how that affects Mario's speed pushing against the wall. But now we move on to the backflip wall jumps. These are technically quicker than wall hug setups as they don't require a jump to set up the handspring. However, they obviously gain much less height than a full triple jump. They are used selectively throughout the run, most notably in 1-7. Frame data seems to be consistent on all of them, if somewhat discouraging. Similar to how the three frame launch on the wall hug setup is required to achieve the wall jump opportunity, there's a frame window for backflips to generate one. 
Positioning Mario right against the intended wall yields the following results. Frame 1 yields no wall jump. Frames 2 and 3 yield a wall jump. And now here's the pattern. Frames 4 and 5 do not. Frame 6 does. Frame 7 and 8 will not. Frame 9 does. Essentially every third frame will generate a wall jump opportunity. Thus, the biggest window is the two frame window from a standstill. The wall jump opportunity generated by a backflip is also different. Mario has five frames of his skidding animation. Of those five frames, only frames three and four will produce an effective wall jump, with frames one and two failing to produce the jump, and frame five producing a jump a pixel too low to be of use in cases like 1, 6, 1, 7, and 3, 2. In conclusion, each technique has its advantages and disadvantages. A backflip wall jump is faster to execute, but also consists of two nearly frame perfect windows, while the slower wall hug setup is much more reliable and versatile. Each has its own niche as a strategy, and I look forward to seeing how you all incorporate these into your runs. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments or talk to me in the DK94 Discord linked in the description. Happy running!